Well, as you can see, joining me is my good friend, Ron McGill from Zoo Miami. And we're gonna be trolling the edge, obviously, like we do with new products. But this week, <laughs> we're not talking about new products. We're talking about invasive and invasive species here in South Florida. Right? Exactly. You know, South Florida is a melting pot for non-native species. This is one. This is a boa. Still hasn't been called invasive, even though it's starting to f the finding populations here in South Florida down by the Deering Estate and such. They're roaming free. The one we hear about, of course, is the python. Both of these are large constrictors. One of the big differences is that boas give birth <coughs> to live babies. They don't lay eggs. Oh. Pythons lay eggs. So boas, that, this is a medium-sized one. These things can get to be 15 feet long. Wow. They're not venomous. What I want to tell all the kids out there is just because you see me holding this, never ever approach a snake in the wild. I want you to know that snakes are more afraid of you than you are of them. If you see a snake, just go the other way. I promise you the snake will go the other way too. But they're not all venomous. Most of them are not venomous. This is a constrictor. But a lot of people confuse snakes for other animals. Right. So I want to show you another animal, okay? Yeah. Hold on, Michelle, they told me you could hold this. <laughs> Is that okay? You sure? Just to hold it like that? And just hold it like this, like this. And just keep, keep your, just hold it like this. That's it. Just like a tree branch. Perfect. Okay. So now we have here, we have another animal that the first I'm going to pull it out and people are going to say, oh my gosh, it's another snake. But it's not a snake. Okay. It is a lizard. No. Yes. Come on. This is a legless lizard from Florida. Cool animal. And one of the ways you tell the difference is that lizards have eyelids. So lizards can close their eyes. Snakes don't have eyelids. They can never close their eyes. Also, if you look real closely, they got a little hole behind their eye, which is their ear. Snake, snakes do not have external ears. They cannot hear like you and I, Dan. So lizards do have external ears. So this is a lizard, and from here down is all tail. It's called a glass lizard because if it gets really frightened, it'll drop its tail and it'll break up into pieces so that the prey that's trying to eat it will go after the tail and it can go hide itself on, underneath the ground. This is a subterranean lizard. Again, there are, this is not the species found here in Florida, but there are some that look like this found here in Florida, non-venomous. Again, when you guys are out fishing, you're gonna come across a lot of these things. When you go along the waterside, along the canals, around whatever you're fishing, you may see these things. I don't want you to panic. You know, it looks really slimy, right? But touch it, Rick, is it slimy? No, not at all. No, it's like a cold plastic, you see? And that's because- Now, do these bite you, Ron? They can bite you, and that's, you know, I don't want to mislead people. When you see me holding these animals, I don't want you to think, oh, I saw Ron hold it, so I can just pick it up and grab it. No, no, because these animals have been accustomed. They're ambassadors, so what they do is we use them to educate people, to let them know what they're like, but in the wild, they don't know that you're not going to hurt them. They think you might, and they may bite you, so we'll put him back okay. right here. I got to tell you, Michelle, you are the bomb over there with that, that <laughs> boa. You've done a heck of a job, and I, I was pretty impressed with that. So anyway, these are all things that I want people to understand. When you're out there fishing, you're gonna come across other wildlife, and with that other wildlife, I don't want you to panic. I want you to understand that we gotta to learn to coexist with this wildlife because it all plays an important role in our health. So Ron, one other thing, let's talk a little bit about if they do encounter, you know, like all the different fish that we have. You and sure. I filmed a show in the Everglades, yeah. and we caught seven or eight different species. What should we do? What are the things that we're recommending now, FWC as well as you guys? Well, how, do you, how should we approach all this? You know, if you're, if you're picking up an invasive species fish, I know it's hard to say, but you shouldn't put it back, okay? If you're picking up a, species, a, a fish that's an invasive species, not peacock bass, that's, peacock's non-native, but it's not an invasive species, it's a beneficial species that was purposely left here for sport fishing. But non, you know, if you were to pick up something like- Snakehead. Uh, a snakehead, exactly. A snakehead. fish. Clownfish. Clownfish, Oscars, a lot of the cichlids that are non-native and can be invasive, those animals don't return them back to the water. You're doing the service by taking it out so the, not, so the native animals can have a better way around. They don't have as much competition. Same thing with non-native snakes. So let's talk a little bit about the zoo. You got kids camps as well. We have kids camps out there now. Yeah, it's all summer long. You go out there and the zoo's your classroom, man. You go out there, you go see how they feed the tigers, how they prepare the diets. You learn about different things with animals. It's, it's a neat camp, I gotta tell you. It sells out every year, but it's a neat camp. If you get a chance to get in there, call the zoo and set them up for camp because it's a lot of fun. Kids come home really tired for the parents. That's great because they go right to sleep and then you can have your own time and it's fantastic. One other, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, parents gotta have their own time, yeah, I can tell important. you that. So one other question. Let's talk a little bit about your foundation. You know, I'm really proud, Rick. I have the Ron McGill Conservation Endowment at the zoo, and I established that endowment to help support wildlife in the wild where it belongs. I will say this, and it's gonna sound kind of strange coming from me, but in a perfect world, we wouldn't need any zoos. I would never ever support taking an animal out of the wild and putting it in captivity to have it on an exhibit. I have, we have animals that are born in captivity. They're kept in captivity under human care, but the goal for the zoo is to protect animals in the wild. I've come up with that endowment. I've raised money to create the endowment, and I'm very proud because every year that endowment gives away over 100 
$100,000 just to conservation in the field, including fishing conservation, things like that. So if they want to t get in contact with you through the zoo, what website would they go to? We have go the to, zoo site here. Yeah, zoomiami.org, zoomiami.org, and that'll take you right there. And you can go to Ron McGill Conservation Endowment. It's a totally tax-deductible donation if you care to make that. And what you're doing is you're just making an investment in protecting the wild. Because right. here in Florida, man, this is a special place we live in. Thank you so much, Ron, Thank for you, being Rick. here, guys. We're going to go ahead and keep moving. We've got more reports to do.